I want to speak briefly on a statement that so many people love to make, primarily the so-called white Americans. And there are black people that make the same comment regarding black Americans today and slavery yesterday. Now, I'm going to explain what I mean by that. But before I get started, I would like for you guys to go to another channel that I created, Fearless Vigilante. Fearless Vigilante. And I believe the link is on the bottom in the description page. And if you enjoy the videos and the information or topics that I speak on, feel free to leave a donation. And I just want to give a shout out to those that have donated to this channel. I really appreciate that. You don't have to. You didn't have to. But your support is much appreciated. Now, the comment this woman made, and this is a dear subscriber of mine. She's been subscribed to me for years uh, when I had my Fearless 2005 channel uh, before I deleted it. But this is what she said, and, and, and what she said is absolutely correct. I agree with everything she says. But there's a small portion of what she said I hear so many people say, and I briefly want to speak on it. Hence why you see this photo on this video. She says, no amount of revisionist, revi revisionist history will change what happened. No one alive in the United States right now has ever been a slave. Your generation, now before I go on, the only people that have been enslaved here in America, outside of uh, those that's being trafficked over the border, sex trafficking of little children, and even adults, but mainly young people, are being sex trafficked and sold into sex slavery. Okay, But a lot of people don't like to look at that. They like to say, uh, no one in this day and time has ever been enslaved. But according to the United States Constitution, the only ones that's considered enslaved are those that's incarcerated, those that's in the prison system. Now, they don't refer to them as slaves, but if you look at, if you ever go downtown and you look at those that's in the justice center, those that's locked up behind bars or in prison, they're shackled, they're chained, just like people that's enslaved you know in old times they used to have them working on railroads and and really doing hard time moving rocks you know i mean hard time hard labor is what they used to do i mean when you did a crime you had to pay for that crime and it sometimes even uh losing your life you know capital punishment okay but no one in this time is enslaved or has been enslaved except for those that's in the prison system and it's because of the fact that they committed a crime and what also speaks to this topic is there's many young black men that's in the prison system that's innocent that committed no crime but somebody you know pointed at them in a lineup or some white woman pointed and said he's the one and in reality, it wasn't the one. Or a white woman said he did it because she was trying to make her boyfriend jealous after she chose to lay down and sleep with that black man. So black people, to a certain degree, are still targets here in the United States. Okay, so I'm going to read the rest of what she wrote. Your generation is the wise ones and lived through the tough times. This generation is the tech generation and knows very little about what real struggle is all about. Race does not hold a person back. 
their individual choices and decisions do. I agree with that 210%. But I will not allow myself to be blinded into thinking that everything is okay. Like if you look at this image on the screen, you will see a white man jumping in the air trying to give this, this black man a high five. And it says the Confederate flags are coming down, high five. The black man, on the other hand, is in shackles. Shackles around his neck, his hands, his feet, with the tags, voters ID laws, police brutality, inequality, mass jailings, which of course came under the Clintons. Of course, no one in this generation has been slaves, but black Americans are dealing with the debris, the debris, debris, debris of slavery. For some reason, my tongue is tied today, right? But we're dealing with the debris of slavery. Yes, my generation went through the Jim Crow, the civil rights movement. This generation is still dealing with the debris of slavery, police brutality, inequality, even in the justice system or injustice system. You find that whites and others have more rights than blacks do for the same crime. You have a white woman that would get caught with a pound of meth. I don't know how they weigh meth, but I'm just going to say a pound, right? Don't know much about drugs. But then you may have a black dude with, you know, a roach in his car, weed. He'll get like five months. She gets no time. So there is injustice when it comes to black and white. And there's a lot of old slave laws that's still on the books. There's a lot of old slave laws. California just recently got rid of one, and I give them credit. I applaud them for that. And they changed it to the point where police are not allowed to shoot civilians, namely black people, unless they have, uh, what is it? I forgot the, uh, the wording that they use, but they used to use the term beyond a reasonable doubt or reasonable doubt or something to that effect. And then they would, and when they, when it goes to trial, you know, the wording, the option that they give you or give the jurors have no other choice, but to say that that cop is innocent beyond a reasonable, re, beyond a reasonable doubt or something to that effect. I forgot what it was, but it always played in their favor, favor and against the person that's being accused. So yes, although slavery, no one has been enslaved, we're still dealing with the debris of slavery. We're still dealing with um, racism and discrimination. Yes, no white person has been a slave owner, but because of their upbringing, their generation and those before them, and even what history is teaching them, when you talk about black history in schools, they don't teach greatness of black people before they became captive. They teach their black history go back as far as slavery. And if the teachers do touch on, you know, the greatness of the so-called Africans, I'm going to say Africans, right? At that time period, they're going to say, yes, this person was great. They did this, but they were, a slave. They're going to always bring it back to slavery. They're going to always remind you that you are a slave, that your people were enslaved. So yes, we have more opportunities now than ever. And unfortunately, many black people don't take advantage of that. We see so much ratchetness on the internet 
in real life, black on black violence and crime. No one cares if black people kill black people. They've always been doing that. But then when the mass shooting started and their children started dying, then it became an issue. They start talking gun control and black people jumped on the bandwagon and not realizing that gun control does not affect the black community because the criminals still have their guns. The criminals are still killing black people, blacks killing blacks, police killing blacks. So while you joining forces and saying, let the illegal immigrants in, you have black women in these Asian nail shops are being disrespected by the very people that they're paying their money to. That they support, but they won't go to a black hairdresser. Or they'll find fault in that black business. But yet, right after they finish being discriminated against in these uh, Asian hair uh, nail shops, the next day, they're right back in there giving them their business. So that in itself is the debris of slavery. Yes, no one has really been enslaved in this day and time with the exception of those that I mentioned earlier. No one has been a slave owner to our knowledge because you have people like Kamala Harris, her ancestry are slave owners, but you have so many black people that still support them and still on the demon crap plantation. And I have to bring that in because that just goes to show how ensnared and in shackled the black mind is and how they remain on the demon crap plantation because of generations of slavery or leading back to slavery. So yes, this young lady is absolutely correct in everything she said. But when she says no one alive in the United States right now has ever been a slave. Well, we have to look at a lot of the immigrants that come here. We've seen articles where Africans are still being sold into captivity. They're being told that there's a way that they can get to the United States and we'll help you to get to the United States. And then once they board these ships, they end up in a totally different place. And I'm sure that there's somebody here in the United States today have been a slave that's still alive or that's been a slave owner or the children of slave owners or the children of slaves. Yes, still exists right here in the United States. But yes, although this is a different generation and this is a generation of technology, their mindsets are still in chain. Blacks are still dealing with the debris, debris of captivity. Whenever they're looked at by police, even myself, they have no criminal history at all, can be driving down the street and I've been going to photo shoots and been pulled over by police just because of my skin complexion. Just because I'm brown and you can see the cop looking at me, I get pulled over and he asks me a series of questions. Why are you out here? What are you doing here? Why I got to tell you where I'm going? It's none of your business. Why'd you pull me over? In most cases, he'll get a response like that, depending upon how he come at me, which he shouldn't have pulled me over in the first place. Well, we had a rash of break-ins in the neighborhood. Well, why you pull me over? There's other traffic that was ahead of me and behind me. What made you pull me over? And what do I have to do with the rash of break-ins that is allegedly in this area? That has nothing to do with me, but it was my complexion that he looked at. So yes, we're still with the, dealing, dealing with the debris of slavery. They still look at us as criminals. See? So 
I agree with this sister 210%, but what many of us have to stop buying into is the fact that because no one in this generation or in this in the United States today, outside of the ones I mentioned, are enslaved. And if you're innocent and incarcerated and you've been there, you 16 years old, get sent up the lake, right? Sent up the creek, and then you getting out at the age of 50. So your whole life is gone. And now they're just realizing that you were innocent. You did nothing wrong. But yet they had to meet their quota. There, there's, there's prison businesses that's being set, designed for black people. Black people have always been a commodity to this nation. And you have to walk an extremely thin line not to get caught up in that system. But unfortunately, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and even sometime around the wrong, around the wrong people, you could get caught up for just being there and for being so-called black. And I hate using the term black. Those of you who are familiar with me and that's been subscribed to me since Fearless 2005, before I uh, deleted that channel, you would know, I hate using the term black. But so that people can completely understand what I mean. Because when I say brown, they're thinking of other people like Arabs and those in the Middle East and, you know, and they refer to them as being black. So, but again, like I said, of course, no one's been enslaved or been in captivity. But we're still dealing with the debris of slavery. Blacks are be, still being targeted. Blacks are still a commodity to this nation in every way, shape, and form, and even politically. And that's why I always talk about the demon craps because blacks refuse to let go of that plantation. When you remain a demon crap, you remain a slave in a political sense. No, you don't have shackles on your arm, your hands and your feet, you know, your neck. But when you have chains on your mind, it affects your hands and your feet because then your hands are now politically tied. Your feet now are politically tied because you're so dependent upon the system itself because of that mental slavery because of those mental chains, now you refuse to do for yourself and to do for others that look like you and to support others that look like you for the fear of someone that looks like you might have or get a little bit more than you. The crab mentality. So when you have chains on your mind, you might as well have chains on your hands and feet because now you're not able to reach your greatness. Yes, black people love to say, especially so-called pro-blacks, love to say how great blacks were and how they were kings and queens and priests back in time. But yet in this day and time, your hands are chained and your feet are chained because your mind is chained. You're like that elephant that's been caged for so long that when they open the cage door, the elephant remains. He remains as big as he is and as strong as he is, he remains because he's not, he doesn't even realize that he's free. His mind is still in the cage, but the door is open. He's free to go. He's free to roam. He's free to reach his greatness. But blacks will never reach their greatness until they loosen the chains on your mind and leave that demon crap plantation that destroys you. So enough of that for now. Feedback. Tell me what you think. Until next time. I'm fearless.